I'm inside a jail just getting somebody out. Listen, thank you so very much. You have one of the best um, contests out there. I went through, I'm not going to say names, but I went through literally just from being ready to retire from doing landscaping for 19, uh, 11 years to blowing over 260 just in training. And I came through you and I'm like, oh my God, you know, like all everything is literally like right here with you guys. And I, I'm just like sending it left and right to all of the people that I know. Like, listen, <laughs> thank you so much. Now, I have done three subject twos, and one of them I really make a good profit on it, but I did it long term. So I did it on a sell on agreement for deal or land contract. So I got okay. three other properties in Michigan that I'm doing the same way now. One of them has an encroachment issue. I want to cash it out so I, I can put more value into this. Uh, right now, I just started doing, I was just doing your, uh, the schedule that you were saying. I was just literally just working on that this morning. I got uh -huh. the bash lives. For to get my skip tracing because my skip tracing was really bad. And then I realized it was because of that. My 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 info is good now. So I got the bash dialer as well. So I'm working on that. And tomorrow starts my uh, calendar as, as by your schedule, like the schedule that you gave me. Good. So I'm working on that now. I'm starting all over because my training that I was doing. Go get it. Because the training that I was doing, you know, all of these mentors had me like all <laughs> everywhere, you know. But then I came to you and I'm like, I just got one focus. And it's... Um, doing this training to make this happen because I'm literally just like running out of my last, you know, couple of thousand. So I want to just invest it the right way this time. And I yeah. have uh, 2000 leads and I've been driving for dollars. So I got, um, I got about 450 driving for dollars around Orlando area in um, Lake Wales, um, Winter Heaven, Claremont. So I've been having a lot, a lot of driving D for D leads. So what would you tell me to just go ahead and do my next step or so you got the uh, driving for dollars down. I would. Uh, so are you doing this local or virtually? I'm doing it local. Well, I'm in Orlando, and um, so I'm a realtor, and I'm giving my license up. I literally just stopped that. So uh, it's going to be going uh, you this find, month. Yeah, you finally <laughs> listen to me, huh? Yeah, yeah. You, you realize the license is a double-edged sword in uh, wholesaling. Like a yes. lot of people think it yes. fixes the problem. Actually, it starts a lot of problems. I have... Um, I have three people that recently came to me. Someone told them to get their real estate license to cover their butt. And they said they have to renounce their license because they're getting so many complaints from realtors, title companies. And there's, uh, they've been, they're on their third broker now. And I go, listen, I, I told you like what we do, uh, if people don't understand what you do, they just report you. Yep. So, and I've been reported Oh, probably a hundred times. And here's the beauty is I don't have to explain the realtors what I do. If the realtors aren't involved in the transaction, I don't owe them an explanation mm -hmm. ever. Unless the homeowner wants me to help explain it to them. Because realtors always try to talk my sellers out of deals. And so for that reason, it's one of the main reasons I don't have that license. Plus, it really is a mess in marketing because you got to disclose to everyone you're a realtor. Yes. And a lot of people that come to me, they just, it's not that they don't like realtors. They just don't trust realtors. They've had a bad experience in the past and they just want a cash buyer to kind of get it done. So my suggestion is going to be, it's going to be really shocking information to you, Novin. It, it's not good. You, you got to get the government list and go crazy on them. So I uh, last last Friday I went through uh, the court records in Orlando, Orange County, yeah. and I uh -huh. sat there and they they you know one. So I put the whole list and actually I was sneaking my phone and I was taking a screenshot of it so that way I don't have to like write them down. So I got all of those addresses and those yeah. are going. Those are the ones that I got sending letters tomorrow. Now I went all the way back to February the first. You think that was like too far out or? No, I mean, it's not that far. Just uh, the fresh you can get on probates, but don't forget about your code violations, your tax delinquencies. I mean, these, these are the type of lists that are going to have the uh, highest probability for you. Like it just, remember, you need to find people that need to sell their house. It's easy to find people who want to sell their house. Find people that need to sell their house and then just focus all your efforts on those because trying to convince people who want to sell, it's a waste of time. Okay, so code enforcement. Code violations. Code violations, probates, tax delinquencies. Get those three on there like yesterday. Okay. All right. Uh, how do I get? Um, I'm structuring a subject to deal, which now the listing expires. Um, so I'm, got, I'm having a meeting with them on Thursday. Um, it's three hundred twenty thousand dollars. They have a two hundred sixty thousand dollars mortgage. I'm going to be getting it for two eighty nine. Um, subject to, I'm going to be doing twenty k down and the rest of it. But I'm having a little issue with um, trying to structure it. Like the right way. So you're, are you buying that one? Yeah. So I found a buyer because I work with a lot of Latino communities. So I, I found a Latino guy that has $50,000. So I'm pretty much coming in with 20 and I want to 
be packing in the rest of it and, you know, still okay. make it work for them. So, but you're not using your 20K, right? Well, I'm trying to use his 20, 20K. There you go. <laughs> so guys, I want you to understand what, what he just said. And a lot of people don't talk about it <clears throat> is if, if you focus on your own, if you focus on markets where you have similarities, like, so I'm in South Florida, like a big part of uh, the community I live in <clears throat> is bilingual. And the further I go south, <clears throat> if I get in the Dade County, it's more like 65, 70%. If you don't speak Spanish, you're a dead man walking, especially as a wholesaler. Broward County, it's about 40%. Palm Beach, it's about 30%. It's about 20% where I am. But knowing this and understanding it, you can do simple things. You know, like you can convert your contracts to, um, to the, uh, the native language. It's, it makes people very comfortable. I'm and working on that. Can, yeah, so you can do that with AI very simply. Um, or for five or ten dollars, um, you can have someone just convert it for you, word for word. Yes. You remember the translation is a little bit different because it's not word for word. But, yes, exactly. Because I so, translated myself to Spanish yeah. and I translated using AI, but some of the terms I still got to kind of like switch a couple of things. But it, yeah, I know. But I'm, so, did you know that like in the state of Florida, you're supposed to put the contract in the the language the person's um, most comfortable with, meaning. That's native to them. And if you don't, they can actually get out of the contract. So ah. what I'm saying is if regardless of what heritage you are, stuff like that, like we have mm -hmm. a big Creole population in South Florida, obviously Hispanic mm -hmm. and people just people trust their own community. And if you can help people out and help them with that, it's phenomenal. Nobody ever speaks about it. So like kudos to you for actually doing it and actually realizing it. And I would go ahead and convert your contracts, have two types of contracts. Some people speak perfect English and Spanish, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I speak Spanglish. That's about as good as I get with it. I can understand it. I just can't say it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Don't speak right. real fast to me and embarrass me online. But like it's so I have family that's um, Hispanic. So I have to understand it. So like I get there because they all start talking like they're always trying to figure out what I do and they do it. They speak in Spanish. So uh, that's awesome. <clears throat> And honestly, if you have a family member or somebody in your staff, um, you can actually cater your marketing to it too. Bandit signs, um, sticky notes, all that stuff. So, um, and then you reverse so driving for me or what's that? So they can do it for me. Is that what you're saying? You, listen, you can convert a contract with a simple Google search. It's a piece of cake. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you speak, you speak, obviously Spanish. you speak too. Yeah. And you Spanish. speak English yeah. very fluently. So you give people the option. People love someone that's uh, habla espanol. Like it's, I, and I do a lot of my, this is why my main focus is pretty much being my Spanish community. And now uh -huh. I got like Zach, I got three people in, uh, one in Fresno, one in, uh, Stockholm, California. So they're actually doing the D for D and I'm actually, um, doing, uh, the, um, going to be doing the call calling. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh my God. Especially in Spanish. So that'd be amazing. But I tell you what, hit me up if you ever want to do a deal together. I would love to do something with you. I think uh, you're a creative guy. I, I need that. I, I did.